everyone. We're going to go ahead and jump into Google Slides 101, and I'm going to try really hard not to make this too long of a video. Please remember to pause as you need to and do as I do as we're going through this. So hopefully you've taken a class with us before and some of the stuff that we dive into right away is going to be familiar to you. Um, I'm in Chrome. All things googly are going to work better in Chrome. We're going to go up to the Omni bar and we're going to type drive.google.com. For those of you that have taken a class with me before, you know this is just my preferred method or way of getting into Google and the Google suite of products. By staying in Google Drive, it allows me to keep myself more organized. You can obviously go to slides.google.com and it will show you all of the things that you've recently accessed um, and give you access to some templates up here at the top, which is really one of the only reasons I would go here is to access these templates. Otherwise, for the most part, I'm staying in Google Drive to keep myself organized. Now, I do have a folder down here that's labeled test where I like to just create certain things. So today's objective is to go through a daily objective slide deck. Your end product could be this daily objective slide, slide deck, or it could be um, whatever you want to use maybe in your classroom tomorrow. That's the ultimate goal is to get you to a place where you feel comfortable with Google Slides. So there's my test folder. I'm going to go ahead and double click and jump in. Now in Google Drive, once I'm in the folder I want to be, I can go up to this new option. If you do not have a folder, go ahead and create one, by the way. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and go into Google Slides. If I go over to this arrow, I do have the option to use a blank pre presentation deck or to go from template. I'm just going to go ahead and start with blank so that you can see everything as I'm doing it. Once again, we're going to kind of try and create something that looks like a daily objective. So I'm going to go ahead and click and add the title daily objectives. Off to the side, I once again, I'm reminded that I have options for themes, but right now I'm going to go ahead and just click out of that. So to delete any of the objects that you don't want, you just have to highlight or select them. And as long as you don't have the cursor in there, if you select just the, the box itself and hit delete, or you can come up here to edit and hit delete, both options will work for you. Um, now, after I've gone ahead and created my first slide here, if I go up to this untitled presentation section, I click on it, it's going to grab any of the text that I've typed so far and just think that that's my title, which is fine for now. I can come back and change it if I want to. As I don't have anything selected on my slide, I do have some tools up here that are going to allow me to change and manipulate the current slide that I'm on. So I can change my background, so I can go in and I can change the color if I'd like to. Let's say I go into this color here. Now one thing to think about is your design aesthetic, especially if you're, if you're in a classroom that's large or you have a lot of students. You wanna make sure that you don't put too many words on your slide and that your fonts are nice and easy to read and nice and big. And in this case, I kind of am worried that the dark hue of the background and the black font might be difficult to read. So this is an instance where I've just highlighted my font here and I'm gonna go over to the text color and play around with the text color a little bit and just say, I don't know if I like that background color or not. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change it back to white, which now means you can't see my font, but my font is still there. I've highlighted it once again. I'm gonna go back to black. Just keep it nice and simple for right now. Of course, if you wanna change your colors, go ahead, but I'm gonna keep bringing up how important the design is and making sure it's nice and easy to read again and again. So I apologize for that because it's probably going to um, become redundant. Up here at the top, you do have the option to add a new slide. If you click the down arrow, you'll see all the different options that you have. I tend to like to keep to like the big number or the title slide option just to remind myself again to stay with a large, easy to read font. If I'm going to be adding um, a prompt for my students, I might come down here to like main point or section title and description. Again, trying to maintain that larger font size 
versus going to this title and body. Because I think sometimes when you're in this title and body slide, it, you're just going to pack it full of text and we really don't want to do that. So um, for this particular example, I think what I want to do is click on main point and I'm going to create a prompt here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go and grab a prompt. Now, as soon as I see this on the screen, it's not going to work for me because obviously the text is too small. I can highlight that text and jump, jump up here and start playing around and messing around. Oh my gosh, that's not going to work. Oh, and I can, I can do this thing, which honestly, people, this drives me absolutely nuts. So I'm going to show you a tip or a trick on that. I'm going to select all of my font here. I'm going to hit those keys, Command, Shift and greater than and did you do you see what's happening instead of hitting that drop down menu i can find exactly the perfect size maybe i'll drop this down and i can make it even bigger you guys this is revolutionary this is going to change your world i just know it okay i'm going to select this and i'm going to move it up a little bit keeping in mind command shift greater than less than I'm going to go back to slide two where we had our prompt. I'm going to select my font and I'm going to hit greater than, less than, and get my prompt nice and big. Now if I wanted to, I can obviously drag this out a little bit more. That was select slide two. We're going to go ahead and go down to duplicate slide. So I'm right clicking on slide two and I'm going to go down to duplicate slide. Let's go ahead and duplicate it a couple of times. Let's go to three times here. So this is our original, we're gonna keep it. This is the next one. What we're gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and add a timer. So this is a great feature because it's gonna show you that you can in fact add YouTube videos. So we're gonna go to video and we're just gonna do a quick search. Let's say we want our students to write on this prompt for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna type 10 minute timer. It's just gonna do a quick Google search for me. Obviously I can watch any of these at any time. Some are better than others because some can definitely be obnoxiously loud. But let's just say I'm gonna select that one. Now that is way too big. I'm going to make that quite a bit smaller. Pop it down in the corner. Here's the thing with YouTube videos. If you have a YouTube video like this, it's not going to work until you go into present mode. But once you're in present mode, like I am now, you'll see you get the YouTube play button. So take a look at that. You've got a nice large size font for the students to be able to read. You hit play and you got a 10 minute timer working in the corner so that they're able to see how long they have to write. Now the thing is with this, as soon as you click forward or back on the slides or you exit out of the full screen presenter mode, the YouTube video is going to go back to start. So it doesn't allow for you to keep that timer going, but I do think that this is a great way to show your students the time that they have available. Okay, we're going to exit out of that because another option I wanted to show you is instead of using a timer, I love using music. So one thing you could do, um, we could do, let's see, Taylor Swift shake it off. I'm using this one because I know it has the video or audio only option. So by typing audio only, what that's going to give us is a static image versus a video image or a music video. It's a static image so we can resize and have it off to the side just like we did the timer before. So I'm going to make this super tiny, as tiny as it will let me, put it down here in the corner. And now again, when I go into present mode, I can click this and I'm going to get the song playing in the background. It's nice and tiny. It's a static image, so it's not going to be distracting. <laughs> I mean, it is a song, but you can um, definitely do um, classical music, jazz music, whatever you want. But as long as you search for audio only, then it will give you that static image like that. So it won't distract the students. All right. Another option here. Okay, so I made an extra duplicate of this particular slide and I don't need it. So I can hit delete on my keyboard. I can go up to edit and delete. Either of those will work. And let's say I wanna create something else for the students that shows specific steps. 
want to maybe start out with a blank option here and I'm going to add an image this time I know I have some things in my Google Drive so I'm going to click on Google Drive it's under <laughs> a folder that is not spelled correctly I know it's graphic instead of graphics it's not mine <laughs> but let's say I have this one it's step number one step number one for the students and I want to go ahead and add step number two as well and I'm gonna add step number three now here's the thing with um, with images they're gonna snap into an order unless you change it to something else but you also see here I'm getting these red guiding lines so this is going to be super helpful. You see, not only do I get the guiding lines, but you're also seeing, hopefully down below, that little H looking thing. That's showing me that they are evenly spaced right now. So I'm centered and evenly spaced. So one thing I can do is I can select all of these items and then move them around. And I can get them perfectly centered as well. There we go. I can move them farther out. Again, looking for those guiding lines to help me. If I select them all, I can, oops, go back, go back. I can choose to enlarge them all at the same time. So I can keep them all at the same size, <laughs> relatively. I can obviously move them all around. I can also group them at any time I can keep them back. If I go back to selecting all of them and I right click, I have a couple of different options. I can align horizontally into the center. Oh, I don't like that. Control Z. I can align ver vertically to the middle. I can group them as one. So then I don't have to select them anymore. If I just click on one of them, it will select all of them because they are grouped. And anytime I can right click and ungroup them again, so I just wanted to make sure that I showed you how to do those complete options. And also when I'm using a video, let's go ahead and show you video. When I use a video, especially um, right now you can add video from YouTube or you can add video straight from your Google Drive. And usually when I add a video, I like to change my background to black and I'll show you why. So I'm gonna change my background to back, black, sorry. I'm gonna go up to insert and I'm gonna go to video. And let's do the daily life. Let's see if it'll find it for me. Daily life jelly beans. The time you have in jelly beans. That's the exact one I'm looking for. And I'm going to select that one. If you haven't seen this video, it's a great video. Great video to prompt kids into writing about something. What I'm doing is I'm just making the video as large as I possibly can. And then I'm going to center it. And then you see that it kind of just disappears into the black background. Now, if I changed this back to white, you're going to see what I mean. So if I change it into black, it just kind of um, disappears, to be perfectly honest. You can make this a little bit larger because it is kind of in this widescreen pattern. So you can make the video a little bit larger. Sometimes it distorts it. So you're just going to have to kind of check that out and see. Um, I think the other thing I wanted to show you really quickly in terms of images and shapes i saw a friend do this so i'm going to do it as an example you can do um shapes where they can kind of like layer on each other i'm going to grab this and create one more i've animated these even sometimes let's move these up 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 up, up. now what i wanted to show you is i right now i've got this one in the back if I click right click on it and I go to order, I can bring it to the front and you'll notice that it pops in front. I can also click on, there we go. We want to change the color of this guy. So anytime you can go into the custom option and when you go into custom, you can grab, and I'm going to talk more about this in the tips and tricks video, but you can actually shade it and make it more transparent as well with these two sidebars. And I think that's easy and fun to do because now you see even if it's in the front or in the back it's actually see-through okay I think that's pretty much everyone everything I wanted to show you to start with on this um, last and final thing is the ability to share anytime you create a document you want to share it with your colleagues you click the share button in the corner you can type their emails here 
change it from edit to comment to view only. And then if you click into the advanced options and you go up here to this blue change, that will also show you the level. So right now it automatically defaults to sharing is off. You can go up here to anyone at the Beaverton School District with the link, meaning they have to be logged in with a Beaverton email in order to access your, your slide deck. In this one, um, in this level, anyone in the school district can search for and find and view as long as they're signed in. And then if we go up here to anyone with the link, then that just simply means that if you give this out through email, as long as they have a Google email address that they can log into, they can see what you're doing. If you go up here to public on the web, then that just means anyone can search for and find and view what you have here. So lots of different options, but just safe to know that if you, anytime you create anything in Google Drive, it's sharing settings are default to off. No one else can see it. It's yours only. And you have to physically go in here to change it. Okay. So please rewatch this video at any time if you feel like you need to. And um, that was just the basics Google Slides 101. <laughs>